Hey guys, Jaws of Shark Reviews here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Bumblebee Movie Shockwave. So, here he is in his tank mode, and yeah, so um, yeah, this is uh, definitely a figure I've wanted for probably about almost six years now, um, ever since the Bumblebee movie came out back in late 2018, you know, just seeing that Shockwave design on the screen, you know, it's like, man, I gotta own a figure of this, and now, almost six years later, finally got one. Well, well, we did get a core class figure back in 2022, but um, obviously that's just a core class. It was small, didn't have a lot of paint, and you know it wasn't meant to be you know like entirely accurate or anything. Um, I mean, it generally was accurate to the design. It just wasn't anything you know complicated like what we'll see with this figure. But um, yeah. But anyways, uh, before we take a look at the figure itself, let's take a look at the packaging. So. There it is. You got the Transformers Bumblebee logo, Takara Tomy, and uh, yeah, we get this cool uh, render of Shockwave right here. He is Studio Series uh, number 110, and yeah, on the side here, get up close look at that same render, and yeah, Voyager class. On this side, you get a nice, uh, more um, zoomed out uh, shot here of Shockwave. And, uh, they still, like, it's been over six years since, uh, Studio Series launched, and they, they still have the Abbott logo for the Decepticons. It's pretty, uh, pretty lazy on Hasbro's part. But yeah. And then on the back here, um, Big Screen Inspired, uh, Shockwave, the name of the backdrop he comes with is Cybertron Falls. We've, we've already seen that backdrop on, like, several other figures from, uh, the Bumblebee movie subline of the Studio Series. And, yeah. Uh, 22 steps, you get a little uh, bio right here, and there's this here, also right down here, and oh yeah, we forgot to take a look at the top, here it is, it's just the Bumblebee movie logo, and here's the bottom, and that's pretty much it for the packaging, so let's bring uh, Shockwave right back in here, so yeah, um, and I will say, I, uh, you know, after owning this guy for a couple days, he's actually a really, really solid figure, like, um, and that's what I was hoping for, because, I mean, you know, like, he looked great in the screen, and I was just hoping that Hasbro would be able to make, you know, a figure worthy of that, so. But, um, yeah, but anyways, starting off here, let's take a look at the tank mode. Now, for those that watched the movie, um, he never transformed, as most of the other Cybertronian, uh, scene characters, or Cybertron scene characters, I guess, uh, you know, none of them transformed, but, well, I guess technically Bumblebee did. We uh, we did see him transform in some of the Seekers as well, but um, everyone else we can see transform. So um, like a lot of like those uh, Autobot Deluxes that they did that they did back in 2022, they just created a, a mode for Shockwave, and this is the same one that was used for the Core class. It is now you know bigger scaled and uh, more detailed. It has a bit more paint, of course. And yeah, and I think it's fitting that he's a tank because I mean. In recent years, that's what he's turned into. Um, and even in Dark of the Moon, he didn't transform, but they just decided to give him a tank mode. Yeah, here it is. It's like an H in uh, H tank. And yeah, here's the bottom. And yeah, I do really like this uh, can right here. I think it's pretty nice. And you got the uh, little cord right here. That's uh, <laughs> it's not a shockwave can without this cord. But, um, yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, up close details. Love this right here. This will become the uh, chest in robot mode, but you know, we'll, fo we'll focus on that a bit later. And yeah, pretty nice. I like the uh, gunmetal gray paint here, and I love the scuffing right here. I think that looks nice. I love it whenever uh, Hasbro adds like that kind of detail in there. It makes it feel a bit more premium, I guess. And yeah, I get a bit more scuffing right here on this side as well. I think that's nice. I like the gold here. Like, the, the paint's good. Like, you know, um, on some of these figures sometimes I feel like, okay, it's a decent amount of paint, but you could use a bit more. But for this guy, <laughs> I just think, you know, uh, you know, the colors still look nice here. I mean, yeah, I guess maybe some gunmetal gray paint here for the treads, because obviously since winter they're purple shreds. Um, but, you know, um, it's still pretty nice. Uh, it does have wheels here at the bottom, because, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know if Hasbro, well, they did with the uh, Combiner Wars Megatron actually have, like, movable treads, but aside from that, these have uh, molded treads, and then uh, then they just have, like, wheels underneath. 
It's it's a lot easier, so we can roll it around a bit better. But yeah, um, yeah, again for the turret right here, you can move it around uh, all the way back to here, um, and then these uh, pieces right here kind of block that a little bit. Yeah, for this side, you can go at least this far. So about the same, uh, you know, this little um, this little uh, hose doesn't do anything about it. Like it doesn't limit it. So um. Yeah, and it can also point up, well, actually, uh, right here, right like that, and then you can bend it a bit more up if you like to, and you can move it down just about that much, not really, uh, down too far, but, yeah, so, um, pretty nice, um, you know, it's just a basic transformer tank, well, what else you expect, <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, now anyways, for the alt mode size comparisons, uh, here he is with Starscream. To see that there. I mean, not that any of the scale matters because again, we never saw a uh, shockwave turn into a tank in the movie. But, um, but even even so, I think this is a nice scale. I mean, for a Cybertronian jet and Cybertronian tank, I think these two do fit well. And um, here he is with the Studio Series only movie Soundwave. And this, uh, at least you know, this is a lot more creative than wherever this was. <laughs> this. I don't know about this. I mean, uh, I, I know this alt mode's gotten a lot, you know, a lot of hate, and you know, I guess it's somewhat deserved. But um, you know, it's just—I I, I don't know. I mean, it's not horrible. It could have been worse. But it's like what? <laughs> but yeah, there's that. Um, and last but not least, here is with the core class shockwave. And yeah, what I do like a lot better on this one right here is that the purple is now correct because this one's a bit more of a kind of bit more of a reddish violet sort of well this is more like how he appeared in the movie so um but yeah but i still do quite dig this figure although i mean his hands are sticking out at the back right here as you can see but yeah oh and his head <laughs> visible head syndrome but um yeah it, as, as you can tell right here it's the same general design like even you know the turret's the same the cannon or whatever um and yeah as, as you can see that right there and you can see the feet right here <laughs> And yeah, here's the bottom. So yeah, same general design, but, um, but this pulls off way better. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the alt mode. I, I would show off um, accessory storage, but you're basically already looking at it because uh, you, see, you, know, you got the can right here, and then you have this like little hose piece or whatever that uh, connects to this section right here. Um, by the way, it is disassembled when you get out of the packaging, unsurprisingly, but. Um, so yeah, you got this right here that goes in this hole, and then um, you could put it on either uh, hole back here, but uh, preferably you put it into this one here on his uh, left hand side, and um, yeah, because that's typically where it is on Shockwave. Um, so yeah, that's how that all connects, but um, yeah, so anyways, now for transformation, um, and you can leave this on, uh, you don't have to take it off. Um, I guess it might be easier to take it, just take it all off, but... Um, I'm not gonna do that. But um, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Transformation. Um, you just want to uh, detach the cannon right here, so this goes into this hole. And yeah, so you just want to bring that off there, so it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of sitting here. But yeah, and now you can see uh, now you can see where his head is, and yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um, so uh, next you just want to. Untap the legs, these holes, or these posts go into those holes. And so we that out. All got done, undone there. And do the same thing with this leg. And then straighten this all out. And there we go. And then next, just uh, flip up this piece right here. And, uh, and there's like a little panel there. And then there's that. And then uh, just, just want to bring this torso section up. At the same time, you want to uh, move back this area right here for the uh, torso, and this will uh, click into place right here, and there you go. And then uh, next, bring up the head, and there's that, it doesn't click, it will just kind of stay there. And um, yeah, the next, uh, you can bring up the torso section, like so, and that will fit nice and snug right there. And then you're just going to bring down the legs and then flip out the feet. And then uh, here you're just going to pull up the uh, 
uh, tank shreds and then spin them around and then push this right back down and just do the same thing right here there you go and uh yeah the next you just want to uh untab the uh shoulders from right here or the biceps and there you go and then um you're just going to untab the uh the sides of the forearms from this like section right here that goes on that slot and then uh, next just open up the forearm cavities right here and then you can flip out his hand or actually well i guess we'll leave it out for right now just you know so you can see what it looks like with both of his hands um and then flip out the other hand right here there you go and then swivel around uh, swivel around right here just Oh, I forgot to tap there. There you go. And then there's that. And you can do the same there. And uh, yeah, once you got that all done, there you guys have Shockwave in his robot mode. And wow, this this just looks amazing. Like even on camera here. Like sometimes, like when I uh, when I review these figures, like they look great in hand, but on camera they look like, eh. But even on camera here, man, this looks gorgeous. But um. Yeah, uh, you got this piece right here. We'll just yank this off for now. Right, there we go. Okay, so, um, yeah, let's take a look at the head sculpt first, as usual. And, yeah, that's that's an, that's a pretty uh, nicely done head sculpt right there. And even the paint and everything, it's perfect. And, yeah, there's light piping right up here. Um, so, hey, he can have a glowing eye. And, yeah, pretty nice, I'd say. And there's a, even a face right here in the back, although not a pleasant one. I'd just rather uh, stare at this one eye than I would at whatever this is. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and yeah, you get some nice kind of copper paint. I think that looks cool. And you know, it's, the details in paint in this guy are awesome. Like, especially right here. I mean, all this mechanical detail, the pistons and stuff. Man, that just, mm, <laughs> that's real good. <laughs> But yeah, um, I get some paint here for the knees. The feet are painted, but they still do look nice. There's what the uh, what they look like at bottom, and the back too. That's pretty clean. Like they even painted this section back here. Like they they didn't really need to, but they did. That. And I gotta give the Hasbro designers credit for that. Looks pretty nice, and you get even more uh, mechanical detail in there, and yeah, that that just looks awesome. And uh, of course, you do get some a little bit of hollow bits here at the back of the lower legs, but oh well. I mean, it's it's a bit of a compromise, but you know, not too much because the rest of this guy looks awesome. And uh, oh yeah, then you get these pieces up here where we saw those before. And yeah, now anyways for the uh, articulation, heads on the ball joints, you can wiggle it side to side. Uh, it can't really look up because it it's, goes back into place and. It can't really look down either. That's as far down as it goes. Um, so that's a bit of a bummer, but you know, I, th I think we all expected it with this wide head, this flat wide head. Um, but yeah. Now, shoulders can swivel full 180 and can go outwards that much. And uh, actually, I think you're supposed to bring these pieces up. I, think I forgot to do that. But, Uh, I believe these, those are supposed to go up. Oh yeah, I forgot to show off, uh, well I did show these off earlier, but I got the nice scuffing in there. Um, it's paint, don't worry. <laughs> I didn't scuff the figure myself. Come on. It's supposed to come up. Hold on a sec. Okay, never mind about that. Uh, yeah, I thought these like go out a little bit more, but maybe I'm just thinking wrong. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, anyways, um, yeah, shoulders to move, full 180. And, um, yeah, it can go out this much, so that's pretty nice. Um, he doesn't have a bicep swivel, but he does have a uh, swivel right here, just below the elbow. So you got that, and speaking of the elbow, you have been right here, a nice solid 90 degrees. And uh, his wrists are in ball joints, uh, so you can move them around. He does have a waist swivel, um, and yeah, legs can kick up this far back that far, and then they can go outwards this much, so they can do the splits. <laughs> uh, Shockwave can just flat break dance. 
and um, yeah, knees do bend, and there are swolves just right above the knees, so you're gonna get uh, some wiggle movement right there. Uh, ankles do pivot, and the feet can move back and forth. And yeah, so yeah, really solid articulation. Like, I didn't expect this much on this guy. So, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It's, I'm just thinking of, like, how hard it's gonna be for Takara to, like, top this with the, M like, with the, um, the inevitable MPM. Uh, cause, I mean, this, this figure alone, like, I, I think, you know, there, I mean, I guess scale-wise there should still be an MPM for, you know, those collectors, but... Um, I, I just think this one's like too good that you know we don't really need one. I mean, all we need is just in like an upscale, like a KO company just makes an upscale version of this guy, and then there you go. <laughs> as, as long as it has good plastic quality, then you know that way uh, masterpiece collectors can just get that one because I mean this this mold's just good enough. But um, yeah. So uh, anyways, yeah. Now for accessories, it has come with this again as we saw before. Now, um, in order to uh, configure it onto his arm, uh, what you gotta do is you just gotta flip in this pose, or actually, no, flip back to this one, so I always forget. Um, yeah, you just gotta flip it back there. And then, uh, next, you just want to tuck the can piece, it's not focusing, there we go. Um, you just want to tuck this front can piece right in, and there you go, that just condenses it a little bit. So, um, yeah, then next, you just want to attach this right here, you just want to Make sure that gets in all the way, and there we go. So next, you just want to, uh, so as, as you can see right here, um, there's like a little uh, tab right here on this uh, uh, on this handle right here, and that goes into the slot right here on the side of the forearm, and you just want to attach it right in there. Or actually first, I almost forgot, you gotta flip in the hand. And close that up, and there we go. Now you can do it. So then just squeeze that nicely together, and make sure it's aligned. And there you go. Now there he is with his signature cannon, and yeah, he looks ten times better with that because I mean that's it's basically been Shockwave's um, signature weapon since the start of the Transformers franchise back four years ago. So I think that looks nice. Really, really awesome. And I mean, his only appearance in the movie we saw him just. Oh, whoops. Um, we saw him just do this. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, uh, it's a bit higher up. <laughs> something, yeah, like that. It's like, um, he said, said something like, Decepticons destroy the launch pad! Or something like that. <laughs> um, that, that's my best shockwave impression, but, um, yeah, John, John Bailey does a much better impression of, uh, Corey Byrne. But, um, yeah, pretty nice. Um, so anyways, now for the uh, robot mode size comparisons, here he is with Starscream. And uh, by the way, I'm not sure uh, if I showed it off, but he does also have a thigh swivel. Maybe I did, I just forgot, but, um, but yeah, anyways, yeah, here he is with a little Screamer. And yeah, here he is with Soundwave. I do think these two look really nice together. And, last but not least, here he is with the uh, core class version, <laughs> so you get um, Shockwave and Shockwave Jr., I suppose. I don't know, but yeah, there, uh, there's those two there. And by the way, for those wondering, yes, I do have the Concept Art Megatron. Um, you know, obviously, because it's Concept, concept Art, uh, Megatron never appeared in the Bumblebee movie. Um, those who watch it should, should already know that, um, but he was going to be in it. Uh, would have been nice to see, but oh well. <laughs> but yeah, I do have him, so um, you know, so it's cool having Megatron, Shockwave, Starscream, and the sound of you know, like the big four of the original Decepticons, like now all in this like Bumblebee movie style form. I like those all together, they uh, look pretty nice. So um, stay tuned for that review. Before we end the review, since you know, Shockwave here is a Steel Series figure, he comes with a backdrop. So here it is right here. And yeah, this is the same one we've seen since like 2020 with, uh, I think it was Cliff Jumper. He had this backdrop, and ever since then, a lot of these um, Bumblebee movies, Cybertron, only characters that have this background. Uh, some have it, had like slight differences or whatever, or, like different uh, shots, but they've mostly been this one for some reason. But yeah, but you get number 110, Steel Series, Bumblebee, Transformers, 
And yeah, so there's a shockwave right here. So that's what he looks like right there, even though that wasn't the proper shot. Um, for his only scene in the movie, well, I guess he had like two scenes, but still. Um, yeah, there is with that. Hey, uh, just for the collectors of these backdrops. So, there you guys have my review for the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Bubbly Movie Shockwave. And yeah, this guy, as you know, uh, previously hinted, I mean, I, I basically expressed it from the start. Uh, yeah, this guy's. An amazing figure, um, you know, Hasbro did a really, really good job on him, um, because, I mean, you know, his role mode's perfectly accurate to how he appeared in the movie, and, you know, um, articulation's great, uh, except for the neck, could have a bit more, um, and, you know, paint's awesome, love the scuff details that they had in, and, uh, tank mode's cool, I mean, it's not necessary since he can transform into one in the movie, but, um, I think what Hasbro did, like, they basically just upscaled the, the one they gave the core class, Shockwave, and, um, it was, uh, grew for this guy, and it just looks pretty, pretty sweet. Um, and, yeah, just overall, absolute, uh, you know, uh, absolute. So, there you guys have my review for the Transformers Studio Series Forger class, only movie Shockwave. And just overall, a really, really, really great figure, um, and, you know, I mean it, because, I mean, as soon as I got this guy out of the packaging, he just looked awesome, I mean, um, you know, proportions are correct, uh, he's got pretty nice posability, love the paint, I mean, you know, he, he doesn't have a lot, but I think just for what he has, I think it's perfect enough, um, you know, detailing's awesome, and, uh, you know, just some complaints, uh, you know, wish his neck had a bit more posability, but... Aside from that, I mean, this this guy's awesome. I mean, if, if you saw him on screen in the Bumbley movie and want a fig like a nice, proper official figure of this version of the character, uh, then this this guy's a great you know answer to that. Like Hasbro really knocked it out of the park. Um, and yeah, that's really just about it. I have to say with this guy. I mean, you can tell he's awesome. Highly recommend. Definitely pick up if you're a Shockwave fan or a fan of this design. And it's a you know great way to get you one step closer to completing your uh, Bumbley movie Cybertron collection or whatever. Um, even though <laughs> like everyone says that's like one of the best scenes in the movie, and I do agree. But um, let, let's not forget that that scene was basically just Cybertron falling apart. <laughs> but um, but yeah, just overall awesome figure. And um, yeah, so anyways, guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, share for more, and comment down below what you guys think of this figure. So. Anyways guys, as always, to LOL, R1.